In this video, I will explain how to use the MADI method to find an optimal solution to a transportation problem. So let's jump right into an example. Let's say we have a transportation problem where we have three factories that produce some good, and we have four cities that have a demand for that good. Now, in this case, our total supply, if you add up all of the supply values, that's 125. And if you add up the total demand values, that's also 125. So this is an example of a balanced transportation problem where the demand is equal to the supply. Now, the idea here is that we want to fulfill the demand of each city, but we want to do so by minimizing the ship costs. So I've listed the shipping costs from each factory to each city in the bottom right-hand corner of each cell. Now, to come up with something that we call an initial basic feasible solution to this transportation problem, you can use the least cost method, the northwest corner method, or Vogel's approximation method. Now, I've made a video on each of those three methods, and I'll link to them in the description. But for this example, let's assume that we used the least cost method to come up with an initial basic feasible solution. Now, when we use that method, the total shipping cost comes out to $1,080. So the idea with the MADI method is, let's see if we can minimize this shipping cost even more. So let's find the optimal solution. Now, the way that we do that using the MADI method is the first step is we have to create a variable called U1, and we set it equal to zero. So this variable U1 is for row one. Next, we need to create another variable called U2 for row two, and U3 for row three. Then along the columns, we're going to create variables V1 for column one, V2, v3 and v4. Now we need to figure out what are the values for all of these u's and all of these v's. To do that we use the following formula. cij is equal to uij plus vij where c is the unit shipping cost for row i and column j and then u and v are these values that we've created here. So we're going to find the values for u and v for each of the allocated cells in the table. So the first allocated cell is this one right here, which currently we're shipping 15 units of this good from factory one to city one. This formula over here says that U1 and V1 must be equal to eight when you add them together. So if U1 is equal to zero, V1 must be equal to eight. So that zero plus eight is equal to this unit shipping cost. Now that we know U1 and V1, we can figure out all the other U and V values. So for example, the next allocated cell is this one right here, which has a unit shipping cost of nine. Now, if V1 is equal to eight, eight plus what is equal to nine? Well, that would be one. So U2 must be equal to one, so that these two values equal the unit shipping cost. Okay, the next allocated cell is this one right here. So this has a unit shipping cost of six. So if U1 is equal to zero, what does V2 have to be? Well, zero plus what equals six? Well, that would be six. So V2 is equal to six. The next allocated cell is this one right here. So it has a unit shipping cost of 13. So if we look at U2, one plus what equals 13? Well, that would be 12. So we'll put a 12 for V3. Now the next allocated cell is this one. So U3 and V3 have to add up to 16. So we already know V3 is 12. So 12 plus what equals 16? Well, that would be four. So U3 has to be equal to four. And in the very last allocated cell here, we can see that the unit shipping cost is five. So if U3 is equal to four, four plus what is equal to five? Well, that would be one. So V4 must be equal to one. So we have figured out the values for all of the U's and all of the V's. Now what we do is we use the following formula, CIJ minus UIJ minus VIJ. And we're calculating this for each of the unallocated cells. So for example, we can see that from factory one to city three, we didn't ship any goods. So this is the first unallocated cell. So let's write factory one to city three, or I'll abbreviate it as F1 to C3. Let's calculate this value right here. So the unit shipping cost, which is 10, so we have 10 minus U I J, so U in this case is zero, minus V, so the V value in that column is 12. So 10 minus zero minus 12, that's negative two. Then we're going to repeat this process for each of the unallocated cells. So for example, if we consider this unallocated cell, let's write factory one to city four. So again, the unit shipping cost is nine. We're going to subtract zero and then subtract one. So we get nine minus zero minus one. That turns out to be eight. 
Now I'm going to repeat this calculation for each of the remaining unallocated cells. Okay, so once we've calculated these differences for all of the unallocated cells, we have to look at these values and say, are any of them negative? Well, yeah, we see that this value and this value are both negative. So what that means is if there is at least one negative value, we have not reached an optimal solution. So the way that we can work towards an optimal solution is we look at all of these values and we take the most negative one. So that would be the negative two right here. This is the most negative value. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at that cell. So that's from factory one to city three. So that would be this cell right here. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a closed loop using only horizontal and vertical lines in which the loop only touches allocated cells. So for example, if we start at this cell right here, we could draw a line to this cell, which is an allocated cell. And then we could draw a vertical line to this cell, which is also an allocated cell. And then we could draw a line to this cell and then back to our original cell. So what we've done is we've drawn a closed loop in which each of the vertices of the loop are only touching the allocated cells other than the starting cell. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw alternating plus and minus signs in those cells. So for example, in this starting cell, we'll draw a plus sign. In this next cell that we visited, a minus sign. In the next cell, a plus sign. And in this last cell, a minus sign. Now what we're going to do is we're going to only look at the cells with minus signs, so these two cells, and we'll say which one has the lower value of the shipped units. So this one we shipped 15 units, and in this one we shipped 20 units. So 15 is the lesser of the two values. So now what we're going to do is if a cell has a subtraction symbol in it, we're going to subtract that amount. So we'll subtract 15 from this cell. In other words, this will become zero. And we'll also subtract 15 from this cell. So 20 minus 15 is five. Let's write a five right there. Now for the plus sign cells, we're going to add 15. So we're doing the opposite. So we'll add 15 to this cell. So this currently has zero. So zero plus 15 would be 15. And this cell currently has 30. So we'll add 15 to that to make it 45. So these are our new allocations. And what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate the U and V values and recalculate these values and see if we are left with any negative values. Because remember, if we have a negative value here, it means we still have not reached an optimal solution. So let's go ahead and work through that process. So I'm gonna delete some of this to clear a little bit of room and I'll update these cell values as well. Okay, so once again, we're going to calculate the U and V values for only the allocated cells. So again, we assign U1 a value of zero. The first allocated cell, let's consider this cell right here. The unit shipping cost is six. So remember, U plus V has to add up to six. So if U1 is zero, V2 must be six. Now if we look at the next allocated cell, so let's consider this cell here, the unit shipping cost is 10. So U plus V has to equal 10. So if U1 is zero, V3 must be 10. Then let's consider this next allocated cell here. So the unit shipping cost is 13. So U plus V has to equal 13. So what plus 10 is equal to 13? Well, that would be three. So U2 must be equal to three. Now that we know U2, we can figure out this allocated cell. So three plus what number must equal nine? That's six, so V1 must be six. And then if we continue down to this allocated cell, the unit shipping cost is 16. So 10 plus what equals 16? That would be six, so U3 is six. And then lastly, for this allocated cell, the unit shipping cost is five. So six plus what equals five? Well, that would be a negative one. So V4 is a negative one. So we have all the values for U and V. So again, we can use this formula for all of the unallocated cells. So for example, let's start with this first unallocated cell. So we'll say from factory one to city one, this formula is going to be the unit shipping cost. So eight minus U is zero minus V is six. So eight minus zero minus six, that's two. Then if we move to the next unallocated cell, so the cell right here, that's from factory one to city four, that's going to be nine minus zero minus a negative one. So let's write nine minus zero minus negative one. That comes out to 10. Now I'm going to repeat this calculation for the remaining unallocated cells. All right, so after we calculate all of those differences, we can see that there is a negative value. So that means that we are not at the optimal solution yet. So once again, what we're going to do is identify this cell. So start with this cell, factory three to city two. So that's this cell right here. And we're going to do the same process where we draw a closed loop starting at this cell where we're only touching allocated cells. So for example, we could draw from this cell, we could go here to this allocated cell, then to here, 
then to here, and then back to our starting cell. So this is a closed loop that we could use. And remember what we're going to do. We're going to draw alternating plus and minus signs in those cells. So plus, minus, plus, minus. Now again, focus only on these cells with a minus sign. So this cell and this cell. What is the smaller of these two values, 20 and 10? Well, that would be 10. That's the smaller value. So we're going to subtract 10 from these two cells with a subtraction symbol. So if we do that, this one becomes a 0, and this becomes a 10. And we're going to add 10 to the cells with a plus symbol in them. So this becomes a 25, and this becomes a 10. Since we're starting with 0, 0 plus 10 is now 10. So now these are our updated values. So again, we're going to calculate the U values and the V values again, and then we'll calculate these values again and see if we still have any negative numbers left. So I'll clear a little space here again. All right, so I've updated the values in the table. Let's calculate the U and V values again. So again, U1, we always assign a value of zero. So if we look at our first allocated cell right here, the unit cost is six. So U plus V has to equal six. So if U is zero, V2 must be six. Then let's move to the next allocated cell. So that would be this cell right here with a shipping cost of 10. So zero plus what is equal to 10? That would be 10. And if we move down to this cell right here, we can see that it has a shipping cost of 13. So U plus 10 has to equal 13. So this U2 must be three. Three plus 10 is equal to 13. Then if we move to this allocated cell, the unit shipping cost is nine. So three plus what equals nine? That would be six. So V1 must be six. And if we move down to this allocated cell, the unit shipping cost is nine. So what plus six is equal to nine? That would be three. So U3 must be three. And then if we move to our last allocated cell right here, a unit shipping cost of five, three plus what number must be five? Well, that would be two. So V4 is equal to two. Now, once again, we're going to calculate this difference right here for each of the unallocated cells. So the first unallocated cell would be this cell right here. So let's say factory one to city one. That calculation is eight minus zero minus six. So we get eight minus zero minus six. That's equal to two. Then our next unallocated cell would be this one right here. So we'll say factory one to city four. That calculation is nine minus zero minus two. So that turns out to be seven. And then I'll go ahead and make these calculations for the remaining unallocated cells. Okay, so once we perform all of those calculations, we'll notice that if we look at this list, none of the values are negative. So that means we have arrived at the optimal solution. So to find the total shipping cost, all we have to do is take the unit shipped times the unit shipping cost and add up all of those values. So here's what that looks like. So when we add up all of those values, we come up with a total shipping cost of $1,020. And we'll notice that this is less than the total cost that we calculated using the least cost method. So this is our optimal solution for this problem. This is how we can fulfill the demand of each of the cities by minimizing the shipping cost using the MADI method.